Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to episode four, I believe it is. Uh, last episode, we got into the town Gilded Vale, Gilded Vale and talked to a guy about possible living there, which I don't know why I want to live there, especially with a big tree in the middle of the... Uh, town that uh you know has bodies hanging from it instead of leaves but uh we have a we encountered a bailwack and survived and now we see dead people yeah so we are trying to figure out how to remove said bailwack or whatever, seeing dead people and stuff like that. So, let's get back into it. If you like what you see, make sure you hit that like button. And push that subscription button so you can be all caught up. And follow my other mm -hmm. videos. They're currently uploading right now. I got three of them, the first three. So, whatever you gave me and in, in tips and tricks and whatnot in the comments i won't see them until possibly after this but yeah so uh yeah there's the uh the hanging tree who are you just sitting there smoking let's talk were you looking for someone in that tree uh, i could introduce you uh, looking for anyone who can help me feel better. He gives an understanding nod as he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhausts. He, he exhausts. <laughs> he exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village run around. Uh, watching the village around him. All right. So I talked to the main guard. I think telling me that I should go to sleep after the three bells toll, meaning that Raderick's heir is either dead or he is um, soulless. What's going on? Let's uh, save this. A loss. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. Their raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reached its close climax first figure raises his hand for calm his face is partially obscured by the hood but his height and stature suggest an elf i meant no offense let's put this matter to rest over around shall we my treat oh shit giving out beer i'm okay with that hoping to soothe our pride with a few adira coppers eh we don't need your coin um, uh, what's going on? One of the other men points at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused, mocking us even while he shelters in our village. Just goes to show how fancy Adrea manners are worth. We don't take... That kind of treatment, not from foreigners, and especially not from a th adren ad adrenans. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fire you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksmither. Oh. Okay. I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head. What the heck is a barrel-looking? <laughs> Let me know down below what a barrel licking is. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. Back down, all of you. This is absurd. This is unnecessary. Would you rather be drinking? Um, You're not going to take that from him, are you? I'm staying out of this one. I don't think attacking him is such a good idea. 
And why is that? He's reaching for something, and since it's not a rapier at his side, it's either a wand or a throwing dagger, and you don't look ready to deal with either. Use that. Because then you'll have to uh, have me to deal with. I can show force. I am a barbarian. Hmm. Yep. They look at each other. One of them gives the other two a warning, shakes his head before turning to you. We're done for now. But this one better watch his step around here because we're not going anywhere. With a final skull at the elf, he turns and leaves. Looks like they just hightailed it. As the three stumble away, the elf turns to you, the tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. Uh, glad I could help. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood, and you note the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves his boots are caked with dirt of many months of travel but the leather work beneath it is sturdy and fine well, i suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco aloth corvisser at your service tell me about yourself well, i'm a wizard by training and an adventurer by necessity i was born in the seathwood part of the mainland of the adir empire and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling with the caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Oh, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. In half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious. What exactly did you find there? Um... <laughs> nothing. Um, I could tell him it was a Beowak. Or I could also tell him that there were hooded figures and a strange machine. Uh, well, we were trying to figure out how to get rid of the Beowak disease curse whatever it is so let's go with number one and you survived i've heard such a thing was impossible well it seems you either have a knack for timing or the favor of the gods uh what are you doing in gilded vale An excellent question i came looking for fresh air and cheap land instead the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife but i take it that's a familiar tale and you? Uh... I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on soul. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. He nods at the gnarled old tree in the center of town. The hanging tree. We're going to call that the hanging tree, guys. Just how did you manage to cross these three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. Uh, you did tell that one man to go his sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and adjusts his sleeve. As I try to tell them, they mis misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints and the accent doesn't help. I see. For which I am grateful. Let's uh, discuss something else, shall we? You don't look... You don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. Okay, um... I should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. 
Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. Sweet, so do I. Let's go then. Excellent. Cool. I shall follow you. I shall follow you. Okay, let's have level him up. He is our wizard, so we're gonna give him a couple lore. Three lore? Mm -hmm. Three lore and a sur and two survival. Alright. Next. Alright, I need to figure out a spell. I want him to do a lot of AoE um stuff while um a lot of the enemies around me on in the back taking care of everything um a quick strike of crushing force dealing a little damage but having a high chance of destructing enemy spell casting that's not aoe not aoe aoe Coats the ground in slick, oily like substance, inflicting knockdown on anyone in the uh, area of effect. It's an average speed, 3.4 meter radius, prone for 5.2 seconds, accuracy plus 10 versus reflect. Okay, slicking sounds good. Um, freeze, just a target. Another target, AoE. Well, this one, he has to touch, does he have to touch? A bolt of electric jumps from the caster's fingers to the nearest enemy, and yeah, he's, I don't want him close. Um, calls a field of unearthly blades into existence, inflicting immediate piercing damage and hobbled effect, affliction on targets in the area of effect. 21 to 32 piercing damage hobbled. Ghost blades sound good. Speed El uh, Eldritch aim gives me plus 15. Summons a quarter staff. And then this one does freeze and blind. Well, this one does piercing and hobbling. And then this one causes prone. I kind of like. Ghost blades. I'm gonna go with ghost blades. Now, um, utility. I want him to. <clears throat> Veterans recovery. Eh. Summons. Oh, a rhyme mim uh, mimics the chant. Uh, Chanter's ability to summon skeletons, though it cannot be used until some time has passed in combat, and cannot be used frequently. I, we have to do it. We can y use it. <clears throat> That's see, that sounds good, but I have to wait 15 seconds in combat. It lasts 20 seconds. And I get two human skeletons. So I get four people after 15 seconds. Um, Gallant's focus. Aurora range. Friendly aura gives me plus four accuracy. I can charm a person. And then they can fight against us. But they... We have to be in combat for at least five seconds. Oh, AoE. There we go, the target. Uh, the character has attuned themselves to the natural world like a druid and is able to focus its power on an enemy in with the effects of nature's mark spell. It's a fast spell. Area effect, 3.4 radius. Um... 8% deflection, 8% ref uh, reflex for 39 seconds, accuracy plus 10 versus will. I like that. Um, only vessels. I don't know what a vessel is. Uh, 
I like blast. I think we're gonna go with blast. I think we're just gonna have blast. It has a nice AOE. Yeah. All right, let's go into Blackhound Inn. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hail and well met. Oh, it's you. Kenworth uh, told, uh, told us what you did for him. It's such a relief to have him back. I can't thank you enough. Consider yourself a favorite of the house. This counts on drinks, rooms. Said he wanted to whip you up something nice for you. He's already in the back working in the kitchen. She laughs. So what would you like? I can use some reliable help. You know anyone that's looking for work? Sweet, give me experience. Uh, so we can buy this guy. Oh, when we have the gold. Um, let's see here. What we can sell everything we don't need. Wait, I don't want that. We need to find someone. That is, um, I don't need two torches, get rid of that, yes, I oh, almost got a thousand, do I need this, amethyst, I click, so that, What are we gonna do with sell it? Alright, so we just made a bank trade. Give me that money. I can retrain characters, that's pretty cool. And manager. Except I can get a room. Um, alright. We leveled up again. Nice. So we want athletics, survival, and what's this one? Movement speed. When I'm disengaging, bloodied. I'm below fifty percent. I get plus twenty-five damage. Baron channels his or her own irresponsible determination. Generating a large amount of endurance. That does yell. I don't want them to run away from me. That's a problem. I don't need. Uh, Alright, so. I can do that one. I think that one's the best one. Savage Defiance. I don't want them to run away from me. They need to. come after me or if I do the yell and I frighten frighten them it's easier on me to not get killed easily because I'll if I'm have three people on me two of them may run away well I could just kill the one do the barbaric yell. And why not? And loss. Lore. Survival. Next. Okay. Now, I want him. This is a ray of fire. Rolling plane? Oh, I can have two. Ooh. Go back to, I can go back to level one if I wanted to. Thrust of the Tattered Veils. Eh. Alright. 
Bizarre and perplex vision distraction, confusing enemies in the area of effect. I can make people stuck. Bulwarks against the elements. I can burn, freeze, cor or burn, freeze, corrode, and shock. Combustion, combusting wounds, burn damage. Oh, an AOE. That one sounds good. Curses of blackened sight. I can blind group. I like that. Yeah, I like those too. So we can burn up. Uh, a group and then yeah all right so there's the guy that we saved give me a savory pie recipe okay who's just thanking us all right um do let's look around and see what's going on What's on this? Right click, read that book. Cool. Um, here and here. No, so it doesn't look like we lose reputation if we take things from places. That's nice. I've got it. Finished. Hmm. Another book. And guess I'll get it open. Lock. I've got it. I only have a mechanics of one. I need three. Oh, hey, puppers. Oh, pet the dog. Let's... Can I take the dog? I want the dog. Can I have the dog? Do you think, um, the receptionist lady knows anything about that? I want you like that. I kind of want you a little further back. Like that. Alright. Hello. Uh, I'd like to know more about the Black Hound. Really? Well, let's, let me see. The actual building's been here for years, but the Black Hound is fairly new. <laughs> we just, we get a lot of new faces. And here too, fewer than we used to, I'll admit. Uh, the cook is a big draw. I'm sure we'll be getting big crowds back again in no time. It used to be... I used to work the tables, actually, until the old owner upped and left. No one's sure what happened to him, even left his poor hound behind. 
That's the name, see? The Black Hound. It's still sitting upstairs, pining after him. Poor old girl. Place has ended up in the hands somehow. She... My very own inn. A lot of hard work involved, but it's been worth it so far. Let's see if we can talk to the dog now. You must gather your party before Vin. You must gather your party. Uh, bones cover in the dying in the marge. Oh, see? Yeah. Okay, sorry girl, I don't think he's coming back. Whimper softly again, his head tilted. Uh, I can use a good dog. Here, girl. You gain the item, Black Hound. Sweet. I got a puppers. I'm gonna put my puppers in here. And put the spiritual pig in there. <laughs> What is this? Squirrel tangle foot. Cool. that all right so we got a puppers now there you, there's the puppers um all right so what do we have to do here visions and whispers after fighting an explosion outside the ruins of galant I experience a vision since then i've been hearing sounds with no source and seeing things that aren't there. Alright, and so I guess we have to get some rest. So let's go talk to the innkeeper. How do you do? Uh, room please. Um... I'm hoarding my money, guys, so I'm just going to be in a free spot. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of the gilded veil's gallo gallows tree. The creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like mold, uh, moldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side as you look at her she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeate your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her 
her decaying face when you spoke w with the magistrate. He called her an an um, an an amancer, an amancer. Through it fills you with new wheezy appar uh, apprehensions. You feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she's truly dead. Party gained four six four experience. Find the dwarf woman from your dreams. Great, now we gotta find her. All right, let's go back to here. Yo. Kaldra the Berenzi, the squat, the tended woman of an elderly dwarf woman. Uh, the soft body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bog that sags at a tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen uh, bulges over the rope that suspends her and her lifeless head lulls forward rigidly from one side to another when the breeze shifts. Your perceptive of you Perceive a faint glow around her that causes no light, no it's on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on the object. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing, electrical surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in milky fog. Her body is still swaying in the wind. You no longer feel the tree that stands planted in the misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so. And she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? Are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods and looks pity and look. She nods a look of pity on her face as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to. Is, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and the watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. <clears throat> Not I. Not I. 
I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy even. Do not have to wonder anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I, wherever here may be. What do you mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out the tuft of long whiskers that sprout that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. I think I survived the Beowack. Do you know why that could be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? You said souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success, nothing. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Okay, thank you. Uh, who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. Uh, what happened to you? She laughs, a rasping choke cack uh, choked cackle escapes between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Ugh. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now! Such a question! As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling! Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> that was the worst description I've ever read in my life. <laughs> mm. 
Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months. Looked high and low for impurities. Tested her valence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Um, what she's talking about is this place has been going through um, soulless children from birth and the king or the person that's in charge of this town um, thinks it's a curse and it's been going on since after the war stuff like that so he's been trying to find Animancers to help fix that problem. Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met, empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other, turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fan uh, fascinating science, a fascinating time to be alive in a place like Direwood. Deerwood, I still, I feel like it's been, I feel like they've said it so many times and it's just not sinking in my head. I think it's Deerwood uh, that depend not control the, uh, that does not control the research, no. I love the Pavilion republics, Avalian republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Hmm. Uh, I had other questions. Of course, dear. Um, my question is, uh, bye. Goodbye, my dear. I was, it was lovely visiting. Caldra closes her eyes and he her, her head uh, slumps forward over the noose and the uh, surrounding seems to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. I was granted a crucible of souls. Are you alright? You seem lost just now. I'm a watcher. He arched his arch eyebrows uh, recede into his hood. Well, that's interesting. He gives you a sly grin, and I expected that explains how you survived the Baywick, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty since you uh, we've been traveling together. Oh, two minutes. It's probably wise for us to be sharing these things. Do you know anything about Watchers? Only that they're rare. And that they seem to have unique insight into certain soul conditions he caused, as you just demonstrated. <laughs> uh, let us continue. Wow. 
smart. Why did my... Hello, oh. Okay. That was me. Alright, so... We found out we are a watcher. But, uh, we are over on our time on this episode. Sorry it seems short. It didn't really. I mean, I'm not editing any of these videos. But, um, if you made it this far, thank you guys for, uh, sticking with it. And it kind of seems slow, but I feel like it's going to be picking up soon. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and tick that notif notification bell so you know when my next video is live for you. My name is Devil Syringe, and I'll see you in the next one.